am Coretta Lagarde. I'm the Community Health Director for the Greater New Orleans area with the American Heart Association. And really, we are here because we believe that uh, Complete Streets is helping us to build a culture of health in our communities. Um, I just want to add that um, with Complete Streets and building Complete Streets, that we want to improve everyone's health by making it easier to be safer and active. Um, with Complete Streets, families and children, have more ways to become active. They are able to walk or bike to work a little bit easier than they were used to. And they have access to more ways and to, to travel across the city. Um, the American Heart Association wants everyone, no matter what form of transportation that you are using, to get out and be active and be safe. And so you can help prevent cardiovascular diseases and stroke, any other chronic diseases, and really save ourselves and our community's precious resources. So with the report, we're seeing that we are getting better health outcomes over time and over the recent years, but there is still much room to grow. And so right now, I would like each of the panelists to introduce themselves and tell us who you are and what organization or what you represent here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela Chalk, and I currently serve as the president for the Louisiana Public Health Association. I'm also a um, Safe Streets Ambassador with Bike Easy, and I reside in the 7th Ward section of the city. And I am Michelle O'Flynn. I live in Jefferson Parish. I'm with Bike Easy as an ambassador, and I'm just here as a, a biker representing those who travel in Jefferson and how we desperately need a Complete Streets initiative in the parish. Good afternoon, y'all. My name is Renard Bridgewater. I am the um, I am a current Complete Streets Ambassador, one of the last class that just finished. I'm also the Community Engagement Coordinator for MACNO, which is also known as the Music and Culture Coalition New Orleans. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tony Legi. I serve as Executive Director of the Jefferson Business Council. Jefferson Business Council is an organization of 60 major business owners, CEOs, many of uh, the businesses that uh, uh, are affiliated with our members appear on the wall out here and probably help pay for this building. Um, I'm also a chairman of the Civic Association in Jefferson Parish that currently has 400 homes in it and we're probably the largest civic association in the parish and uh, we are very interested in, in commend this initiative uh, in Jefferson Parish. Wonderful. Um, the way that the panel discussion is going to work is that I have a few questions to kind of start us off and to get us involved in. Uh, then we will open it up for the audience to ask questions to the panelists. And so we're going to go ahead and dive in. And Angela, you're going to have the first question here. So being someone born and raised in New Orleans and have working a career in public health, can you describe the potential impact of a more active community amongst people that you know and the broader public? Well, just like everyone else here, I've seen the changes and the trends and people becoming more active. However, it is imperative that we have safe streets for people to be able to indulge in those activities. I see it as a new culture coming about with the Bike Easy Clubs, the um, Social Riders Clubs. We see them um, with the bright lights and it gets people's attention to say, hey, I want to do that. Um, and for myself, as a diabetic, I went from 197 pounds to 187 pounds, and it's changed my A1C level from 7.8 to 6.9. So, if I lose another 10 pounds, I probably will stop speaking to people because I'll be too cute. <laughs> But um, I, I've seen it, it, the excitement in riding um, the bikes. And as I ride my bike, sometimes it's, it is unsafe. Um, and I want everyone to, to be healthy. And as we hear about the uh, chronic illnesses, asthma, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, I'd like to see health providers incorporate a prescription for physical activity, similarly to the way we give prescriptions for medications. Are there any other comments that anyone else would like to share before we move on to the next question? No problem. All right, this one's going to be directed to Michelle. Can you speak on your experience of biking in Jefferson Parish, both the positives and the challenges, as well as any key connection points that are lacking? 
Well, first, I, I want to say that I understand about the health equity. I am very healthy, but I don't ride just for health. I ride because I have to. 16 years ago, I lost my eyesight. The best thing that ever happened to me, that's a story for another day. But one of the hard things in Jefferson Parish with getting around is it isn't very safe. People don't understand that I am doing the right thing. I'm on the streets, I'm in bright yellow, I wear a helmet, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do according to the laws that Louisiana has put in place for bicycling. And people don't know that. And they don't understand that the sidewalks are illegal for me to ride on. Mm -hmm. And for us to have a better, um, just complete streets program to get this information out there to help people understand and know that um, that I'm supposed to be there, that I have every right to be there, that you're supposed to pass me with three feet, consider me a slow moving vehicle, all this stuff that is important information. And one of the biggest problems I have with trans getting myself around Jefferson Parish is that, is ignorance, honestly. It's just people not understanding that I, 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 you know, I'm supposed to be here. And just because I, I'm blind doesn't change the fact that everybody should have the same right to get around safely. And another big problem I have is getting from one side of Jefferson Parish by Lafayette Park where I stay to the other side to Elmwood trying to cross the train tracks. There is no place safe for me to do that. Um, as far as um, getting out there, I've been doing this for a couple of years, so I guess people are they're starting to recognize that and, um, and it's not anybody's business for them to know why I'm doing it. But the thing is, is it's for everybody. It's, it's, it needs to be something where we can all be safe in doing not just myself and it's also with the with the um all the ada corners they're, they're they're not ada acceptable there there's no ramps there's no crosswalks we need that in jefferson parish for people like me to get around either using my white cane or when i used to have um a, a dog and we don't quite have that yet but i believe we can thank you That's an awesome story and it speaks to the point as we talk about, when we think of complete streets, we think of people who walk, who are driving, who are on bikes, who are catching transit. It's the whole gambit. And so I appreciate you sharing your story with us. This next question, we're gonna um, pin this to Renard. And so in your work with the Music and Cultural Coalition and the artists that you work with, how does complete streets affect their experiences? Well, a lot of the work that I do, a sizable amount, is in regards to working directly with street performance. So a Complete Streets initiative and project that conducts and takes place in New Orleans directly affects those individuals, because think about last Sunday, right? We had uh, Dumaine Street Gang, we had the West Bank Steppers um, that had second lines in both those respective areas, Jefferson Parish as well as or Orleans Parish in the city. If you have a jagged sidewalk, if you have debris and trash, if you have potholes, which uh, are usually covered on WGNO's News with a twist, that makes it hard for brass band musicians, that makes it hard for associated and pleasure clubs to be able to uh, two-step in the streets and enjoy themselves in the culture that we all uh, know and love regularly. Um, in addition to that, from a public safety perspective, um, a lot of times you have musicians that are regularly traversing the city um, after a gig or after the same way that you would have service industry workers, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, when they're coming home, if you have an area that is not well lit, if you have that same uh, terrain of potholes, if you have that same terrain of streets that are not complete and not safe for those individuals, usually when they're carrying cash only, um, that can turn into a situation uh, very dangerous for those individuals on a regular basis. Um, in addition to, we always talk about uh, crime prevention within the city, regardless if we're talking from a city council perspective or from a new mayor or um, candidates that uh, we just had elected. When you talk about that, it specifically involves those individuals on a daily basis when they have to regularly perform, have to regularly uh, engage with communities. So um, for me, working with those individuals, I think a complete street is important because a lot of musicians, a lot of culture bearers and performers are regularly biking to and from gigs, regardless if they're living in a specific uh, culture or a specific community that is mainly with houses, and they're going into a very, um, I guess, plentiful, a copious area where there's a lot of cars. So that's something where either if they're walking to a gig, if they're driving to a performance or things of that nature, they're gonna be directly involving with those individuals and those cars. Definitely. I, that was awesome.
Um, my uncle is in the Domain Street Gang, okay. so I'm we're very familiar with that. <laughs> um, so Tony, this last question is going to be directed to you. And while this report focuses on complete streets through the lens of health equity, how our streets are designed are also touch issues such as job access, affordable housing, flooding, and it impacts the climate change, um, crime, and safety prevention. So how do you see Complete Streets fitting into the future of Jefferson Parish? Sure, well, our organization focuses on two main issues, quality of life and economic development. And those two issues are very, very interconnected. And, and when I talk about quality of life, I'm not talking about making good, na uh, 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 good neighborhoods even better. I'm talking about raising up all neighborhoods because then that obviously has a positive effect on your economic climate in your parish as well. Uh, Jefferson Parish being in, in its development stage really is not, was not planned out for a lot of bicycle traffic as, as Michelle said. Uh, in my neighborhood, again, which is, if you're familiar, it's West Esplanade Power Boulevard right in that corner. We've got some things going on, and it's more from a rec rec recreational standpoint than anything with linear parks. If you've uh, driven up Power Boulevard towards the lake, there's going to be some federal money and parish money put in to create a better, there's a path there right now but there are all kinds of U-turns in it probably every 75 feet, and it's rather dangerous, uh, but there's gonna be some money put into that which will improve that. If you've been uh, to Erlanger, which runs out to the Lake Levy, they've put in, under the power lines actually, a beautiful walking path, bike path, with benches, uh, ornamental lights, the whole thing. I'm actually trying, working with the parish right now to take a, an unused right of way to create a recreational path. Uh, uh, it's right along some of my house, as a matter of fact, but it's an unused right of way, and I've been telling Jefferson <coughs> Parish that one of the things they do is, they need to do is take an inventory of all those and, and make them facilities where, that people can use. Obviously, from a, from a commercial standpoint, you want to have bikeability because there are some people, as was mentioned, that uh, are not able to afford vehicles, they're the working poor, and uh, we need to be able to have them to be able to access jobs. Our public transportation in Jefferson Parish has gaps, we know that, and uh, so it's important that folks always will have access if they choose to use it by using a bike to get to their employment. And we, we know where the, uh, the major employment corridors are in Jefferson Parish, airline, veterans, and, and some Williams. So it, it, the Par Jefferson Parish does lend itself by the fact that it's got a lot of north, south, east, west, straight streets. Uh, and, and I think the parish realizes that, and I think we're headed in that direction. Thank you. So the next couple of questions are going to be for the entire panel, so anyone can jump in and answer, and if multiple people would like to answer, they can do so as well. So one of the things that comes across from the report and that rings true is the immense potential in creating a dramatically healthier community in the greater New Orleans area if we continue down the path that we are. So to the panel, um, has anything surprised you in how biking or walking has been adopted by the communities that you are involved in? And to the same note, are there any specific obstacles that you see for greater adoption of these priorities? I'll go ahead and start with that. The fact that more people are walking, more people are biking is tremendous whether or not they realize the benefits or the health out improvement of health outcomes is irrelevant because not irrelevant in that such but the fact that people are engaging socially and there are also the mental health aspects of it so when you become socialized studies have shown that it decreases or improves your mental health outcomes so just getting out being able to ride being able to socialize and the effects of that, the outcomes are your improved health outcomes. Now, some of the factors that may hinder folks in our neighborhood may be um, high gun violence.
So if we can turn that around and make people feel safe, not only from riding safely in the street, but feeling safe in their neighborhoods, then you get, to, you get a chance to get out into that space, which will help improve your health outcomes. And personally, even, even when I'm riding, you just have to be aware, just like you said, you have a right to be there in the street. So community outreach and education is gonna be key to informing people in low income neighborhoods, moderate working class people, that this can be a family activity. And as a result, the benefits of that will be improved health outcomes. Any other comments? Well, yeah, if I could, the, the money we save in investing in complete streets will be saved in, in relative to the money we spend in health outcomes. If we spend less there, that's, that's great. Um, I know from, from my own personal standpoint, I've always been active. Uh, I ran for a number of years, then that got to my, my joints and I stopped out. I'm primarily a walker. I'm probably the only in person in this room looking around that, that has undergone a quadruple bypass. Uh, I guess I couldn't outrun my genes, so uh, that, that's where that came from. But uh, it, it, it's so very important to make sure, particularly in Jefferson Parish, where we've got an aging demographic, that people have the, the facilities to go out, get, get in recreation, and uh, whether it's walking, whether it's biking, and that's uh, also ne necessary to attract younger people to Jefferson Parish. We've got older housing stock. Yes, yes, They're looking for different things and I think having these types of amenities in neighborhoods and that type of connectivity is, is very important. I would like to speak to mainly about the obstacles. I think with the work that I do is mainly about dispelling rumors and myths, uh, regardless if it's from a musical or cultural perspective, but also from a bike riding perspective. Um, I've had several uh, conversations either online or in person with individuals that feel that when it comes to biking, regardless if they're seeing a protected bike lane, if they're seeing new endeavors and initiatives that are being started for cyclists, it's something where they feel like they're losing a piece of themselves, they're losing a piece of their culture. Um, for a lot of individuals that came back after Katrina rebuilt and renovated and things of that nature where they feel that they don't necessarily have a specific say and those initiatives and endeavors that are taking place. So I think a lot of what I tend to do, regardless if it's online, regardless if we're talking about millennials, or we're talking about folks that are a little older, it's about getting them to understand that bike safety is important, that riding bikes is important because of the health equity that Dan spoke about. In addition to understanding that you too can be a part of that process, you too can be a part of that endeavor to you know, make yourselves better health-wise as well as be a, have that be an integral part of your community. I just want to add also as we speak about the safety as I was preparing for this, according to the um, Accident Access Data Center, there were 90 fatalities in Orleans Parish and 40 in Jefferson Parish. So it's 130 people. Wow. It affects all of us, mm -hmm. especially if that family member is one of yours. Mm -hmm. And in my case, one of those 130 members were or was a family member of mine mm -hmm. riding on her way to school. So none of us should have to be subjected to someone who's, who's ignorant of the rules or just not paying attention. We all have a responsibility to collectively make sure that everyone is educated about bike safety, complete streets, whether you're walking, riding, using public transportation. It's imperative and paramount for all of us to take an active role and to do something. I believe that if we do things incrementally, at the end of the day, we'll have a big change. <coughs> That's good. Thank you. And we all want and we all deserve to live in safe and healthy communities. And I really feel like one of the messages that I kind of heard transcend across all of the panelists was connectivity. And so that this complete streets opportunity of the process allows neighborhoods and neighbors to be more connected with one another, which ultimately improves the quality of life. Um, one more question before we take questions from the floor. As mentioned in the report, despite efforts to pursue and implement complete streets policies, um, projects, gaps in the bicycle network still persist in high poverty areas in both New Orleans and Jefferson Parish. 
Please name a few areas in either New Orleans or Jefferson Parish that you believe to be key connection points that if they received infrastructure interventions could complete and could improve connectivity to where people work, play, learn, shop, and pray. Um, some of you mentioned some of those places before, but if you wanna just reiterate some of the areas that improvements could be made. <laughs> well, obviously Jefferson Parish has its, its major corridors for, for business. And we, we know, those of us who live in Jefferson Parish know where they are. And those are very difficult areas for bicyclists to access. It's easy to go up transcontinental, well maybe not so easy, but I think they could easily uh, put in bike paths on say transcontinental Bonneville and those particular uh, south to north streets to access the east-west. Um, but then it's what happens when you get to Veterans Boulevard. Uh, you know, that might be something where the parish can look at uh, with, with canals. There's been some talk of covering canals and those sorts of things where bike lanes could be put in there pretty easily. Also, you've got some, some wide, um, I don't know what you would call them, but off the street, off the lane areas uh, that, that can be done. So I think it's just a matter of looking at it and planning it out better. And my big thing is, is just the connection between um, one side of the train tracks to the other. And there is no way, there's a really, there's an easy way, and there's no connection really to get from the lake levee to the river levee. Once you're on the river, it's really great. You go right over the Huey P and boom, you're on the West Bank, and then you get, that's actually a pretty good connection because uh, the Huey P now has just been expanded. It's nice. But there is, as you're in the actual Jefferson Parish area, um, Clearview is not safe. Veterans is not safe. Um, I ride a lot on West Napoleon and it's safer, but it's still not quite there yet because there is no um, connection. I go the same way, like towards your house, I head down power and that's how I get to the lake levee. Mm -hmm. But how do I get to the river levee after I've done the lake? I'd have to go down Williams and then I have to cross airline. And none of that is really something that's safe without education. Yeah. And, and in Orleans Parish, we have a lot of diagonal streets and neutral ground, so trying to Cross once you get to a point, and I'm thinking of the point on St. Bernard at St. Bernard and AP Turo, um, th that, that can be pretty tricky to maneuver to get across. And then you have the folks coming out of the traffic circle at St. Bernard. So I'd like to see where we have um, the, not just the lines to say that this is a bike, a bike lane, but painted, line, painted um, avenues and safer boulevards for us to, to be able to get around because that is a another area that with um, a lot of musicians and culture bearers that live in the seventh ward in Treme who bike to work. Thank you. We have a time for a couple of questions from the floor. Yes. Ms. Jenny? Oh, yes. Hi, um, I'm with Biz New Orleans, so I'm here uh, thinking about a business perspective, and I know you just mentioned people bike, assuming they bike to work. Is there any other, um, you know, economic stake that business owners have in these complete streets, and what are some of those? Um, yeah, the health and well-being of your employees. <laughs> <laughs> because if you don't have a healthy workforce, then that's going to reduce your productivity. So to buy into it so that your, your employees are healthy and safe, and it'll drive more traffic into your business when you have a bike-friendly um, business. And also, um, Coretta, isn't there um, statistics that actually show that, that people who bike to, walk, to work or walk to work, they're less likely to call in sick and they're, they're less likely to, um, to, to even be late. They're, they're more energetic about their work. So I remember reading that statistic. Those things all exist, and I'm sure most of the information, while you're looking at that from the economic standpoint, you can see a lot of more details in the full report. Yes, Ms. Beth. Thank you. Um, what about truck traffic? Because if you look at St. Claude Avenue, particularly at Elysian Fields, where on two separate occasions a truck has hit a biker, and even though it seemed like it was a biker's responsibility to be aware that the truck was turning, and they did have some remedy of a sign, briefly the sign's gone. Um, the whole idea of heavy industrial trucks coming through residential streets that have that could 
in fact, be rerouted from St. Bernard Parish uh, up uh, a highway in St. Bernard, maybe Paris Road, and completely, you know, miss coming through St. Claude altogether. I mean, there is so much heavy truck traffic, and it goes by all these schools, and it is a huge health factor because they are filthy polluters uh, and create tremendous noise. So, I mean, the truck traffic itself and the state's policy around where the trucks are allowed to go seems to me like that's part of the, the health as well as the safety of the riders. Do you have anything to say about that? I'm not sure if it's sure like a statement to the government plan or would you have a comment on it? I'd love to hear it. Well, I mean, I, I think my comment would be I, I definitely know exactly the intersection that you're talking about. Um, they used to have a very uh, visible sign that said you need to stop on red and you can't turn um, once that, you know, once that uh, it is red. Um, I think it kind of, like Angela was saying, is more about that incremental learning experience. So the same way that these truck drivers, these companies, and schools could also be educating uh, the truck drivers about various areas and about cyclists at the end of the day so that they understand that they have a right to the road. So when I speak about incremental um, education, I mean whether you're in business or you're a trucker or you're at school or you're in a clinic because you're learning that you need to improve, you need to be more physically active. Those are the things that I talk about incrementally that begin to make a change that's sustainable, that increases when you look at it over, overall, how um, the impact is going to be improved for all of us. There's no doubt in my mind that with any there's no doubt in my mind was that with any complete streets program, there's got to be an educational component as well. As Jefferson Parish moves towards adopting something along those lines, they need to have an educational component. Thank you. Thank you so much to our community panel for all your wealth of knowledge.